ABC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. Uh, VC Cheer. A little miniature Dr. Thunder. Going with the generic stuff today. I really like the taste of that though. Not quite as strong as Dr. Pepper. But uh, anyway, I'm back. Post another quick video here. Um, definitely one of the tough things about being on these Christmas breaks and everything, New Year's, when you have this extra time you don't normally have. I found myself spending a lot of time in the uh, the record stores. <laughs> um, but it's, it's been good though because, as I kind of mentioned a couple of videos ago, I had some credit for some, some stuff that I had sold, some uh, music equipment and everything, so I've been kind of just picking here and there and picking stuff up. Also got one thing in the mail today too that I kind of consider a grail, not necessarily by uh, value standards, but definitely something I've wanted in my collection for quite some time. But I'm just going to kind of jump into it as always and share a few things with you guys. I'll uh, show you what's playing in the background in a second because I'm actually, it's one of my, my recent finds. But I just want to start off with a few CDs that I picked up. One, I don't think I showed this to you the other day. This was one of the CDs from uh, the stuff that one, one of my friends is purging, which is Rush. This is the Chronicles, which is the two CD set, has all their you know, greatest hits and everything. And then I stopped by this little second hand shop the other day and, um, you know, it was just driving by and thought, hey, I have a moment, why not? Found a couple of great CDs for a dollar a piece. I got a Gladys Knight and the Pips, Greatest Hits. Also picked up Parliament's Greatest Hits. That's a really good one right there. That was a great find for a buck. As well as Bush Deconstructed, still steel sealed. Very nice find. As well as in excess. This is ten is it ten or X? Huh, I never thought about that. As long as I've so I think I have a vinyl copy of this, but I never never thought. Is that ten or is it X? Huh. Anyway, so good C D pickups for a dollar there, which is nice. Uh, and let's just kinda jump right into the vinyl too. What's playing in the background, which is a record I have just completely fallen in love with right here. You got the psychedelic furs, all of this and nothing. You know, I had I have this cassette because I think this is just kind of like a greatest hits or whatever because it has songs from different albums or whatever. But um, I, I had this cassette and of course I've listened to it because I always listen to everything before I put it on the shelf. But um, I don't know, I got this record the other day, and I just kind of put it on, and I was like, wow, I do not remember this being that good, but uh, really, really good stuff, and I love that cover, I think that plain black and white, it just really kind of captures, I don't know, the simplicity of that cover, I just love it to death, but yeah, I was listening to this last night, and I've already listened to it a couple of times since, I mean, you know, it has the more well-known hits like Pretty in Pink that's playing in the background right now. But the song that's really captured me again is uh, The Ghost in You, which I think is actually coming up next. I mean, gosh, I just listened to it yesterday for the first time in quite some time. And I was just like, wow, how in the world have I been skipping over that song? So really, really good find there. I'm going to be spinning this quite a bit in the upcoming weeks, upcoming days for that matter. Moving right along. A couple other vinyl I picked up at the, the store I mentioned to you before that's what was going out of business. Here's one I've wanted for a while. I got it at a good discount, so it's a nice pickup. Anvil. This is 13. You know, a pretty decent record too. I mean, this is kind of vintage Anvil. Uh, they have a, a new recorded version of a uh, Metal on Metal on here as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, just as hard as the one before, just you know, kind of a new updated version, so to speak. Or more recent recorded version, I should say. So that's a very nice 2LP set. I was happy to get that one in my metal collection. Here's another one, too, I was very happy to pick up. And this is Handsome Furs. And really like this one, too. Uh, I, I really didn't know this band very much at all. This is a Sound Capital, is the name of the album. And I was roaming through the store one day, and I saw the CD. And of course, you know, when I saw that on the cover, I was like, whoa, what the heck is this? So the, their little, you know, shock value of the cover worked in getting me to actually pick up a CD. And I was looking at it, I'm like, 
okay, got my interest, and I'm like, I have no idea. So I put it back on the shelf, the CD, and I went home a day before yesterday, actually, listened to it on iTunes, and I was like, man, there's some good stuff on there. So I went back to get the CD, or think about getting the CD, since they're having that going out of business sale, and I actually saw the vinyl there. I was like, yes. So, uh, Handsome Furs, Sound Capital, really good stuff. Really cool, too, because this, it came on colored vinyl, which is this kind of orange with black kind of marbly effect there. But the really cool thing about this, besides the front cover, is the insert. I don't know how many of you guys have this or not. Probably the coolest insert I've ever seen. It's a really, really heavy type of uh, poly, whatever, plastic, whatever you want to call it. But uh, here's that song I was telling you about, too. But it's kind of like, a, almost like the type of sleeve that a, a picture disc comes in. So really heavy. I mean, glued, flap on the back. And you, you can kind of see me through it, obviously, because there's like the, it's a picture of some trees and a fence. And on this side, there's, you know, writing and album information. Definitely one of the coolest inserts I've ever seen. And it was really interesting because when I pulled the album out and I pulled it out and saw that, it confused me because I was, you know, just like visually for a second, I was like, wait a minute, are the words on the, like, what the heck is going on? I realized it was a sleeve. So not too often that you get to open up a record and not quite sure what you're grabbing. So that was, that was kind of cool. But yeah, one of the coolest inner sleeves I've ever seen. Not to mention the album itself. Good stuff. Uh, moving right along, just picked this up today, Wild Nothing, this is their new album, is it called, uh, what, Nocturne or something like that, but uh, I really like their, their debut album, which was great, and again, same thing, I, uh, you know, saw this in the store, came home, checked it out on iTunes, really liked it, went back and picked it up, it's, it has a very much the same feel as their, their first album. So if you are a, um, you know, like a washed out fan, you know, that type of stuff, you'll definitely love, love this, especially if you love their first album. This is right on par with that. At least the songs I've heard off of for so far. Finally broke down and picked this up, Black Flag, Slip It In. You know, this was kind of their, uh, in my opinion, their attempt towards a, a more metal type of feel slash sound. I think they nailed it. So uh, I finally got a chance to pick that up. And they had a couple of fun ones here too. Nice little dollar bin find, uh, 12 inch single. This is five star. The song is "Can't Wait Another Minute." And I, I don't. I wonder if anybody else out there actually knows this. I'm sure Billy Crayona. You're probably all over it. But man, this was one of my jams from the '80s that I just did not remember who sang the song. I had no clue. When I was flipping through that little the stack earlier, I saw it can't wait another minute. I was like, no, it can't be, it can't be. And sure enough, I went and put it on the turntable and I was like, yes. So, like a grail dollar bin find right there. Same with this one too. Tough Ink, Golly G. And any of you that remember the movie Rappin' Hood, you know this song very well. This is that's what that's from. So I, that was kind of cool to find the 12 inch single. I do have the uh, the soundtrack to Rappin' Hood, which is kind of cool. And for those of you who don't know that movie, you have to go check it out on some level. I don't think they have it on a, I post it here on YouTube, there's a couple of clips here and there. But I mean, you're talking about basically a, a Grease musical type of movie that's about guys in the hood that are like rapping, you know, where Grease sings, you're the one that I want, they're rapping stuff, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's horrible, but it's so great. Um, it has, uh, oh gosh, Mario Van Peebles is the main character, and then also Eric LaSalle is in it. I mean, if you can imagine Eric LaSalle rapping, it's, it's horrible, but uh, you have to check it out because it's so entertaining, so 80s. But anyway, that's a 12-inch single from that. Now I'll go ahead and show what I consider to be a grail here that came today. And this is also a question I'm going to pose in a thread a bit later too. So I'll go ahead and throw it out there uh, to let people kind of start getting their thoughts together. 
but this is something I've wanted for quite some time, which is Live's Throwing Copper. And just like most of the, you know, really good albums that came out in the 90s, uh, you know, especially getting close to the mid-90s, that's when CDs were making their big, you know, boom or whatever, so these albums were printed not so much, so to speak, <laughs> you know, and stuff like this, and Stone Temple Pilots, and Counting Crows, and all that great stuff that just cost a fortune to get now. So uh, I was really happy to see they reissued this, which was really cool, because prior to that, I know I'd lost a couple of bids on eBay where some original copies from back then sold for like right at $100, $80, $100. So uh, it was really, really awesome to see they reissued this, and I picked up a copy uh, for like 20 something bucks so very very happy to get that like I said from a value perspective not that big a deal but as far as in my collection definitely a grail because this was a fantastic album without question and I guess one of the questions I want to pose to the VC and I said, I'll probably do this in a thread but just even to kind of throw it out there now you know I've been collecting about uh, six years or so six maybe getting close to seven years but about six years and, you know, the first few years, with the glory years, you know, because you don't have really that much in your collection, and you can run into every single dollar bin and come out with 27 records, you know, just like that, especially being as big a big 80s fan as I am. And then, you know, I started buying stuff on eBay, and my collection started to fill out, and now things are a little bit further and few in between. But really, over the last few years, it's just when I really started to I guess understand collecting more in terms of uh, value, pressings, you know, wanting more rare stuff, high dollar stuff, and you know, blah, 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 blah. But one of the trends I think I'm seeing, and I'm interested to know from people that have been seriously collecting for like the past, let's say, 15 years or so, 20 years, is it really seems like to me that I guess with the explosion of vinyl. Uh, they'll become so much more popular that there is like a, a serious push to start to reissue all of this stuff that hasn't been out for so long and I'm just kind of curious for those of you that have been collecting you know 20 plus years maybe you know ha was there a time in the past where you guys kind of saw that same pattern happening or are we really kind of experiencing something very unique over the past few years where you know stuff like this is being reissued um, I know, like Counting Crows, August, and everything after has been reissued. Um, I mean, you know, the, the Maiden reissues just can be like, like on and on and on. Has there ever been another time where you longtime collectors have seen that type of a push by the industry to reissue and get more albums out there? Are, are we really just kind of going through a very special time right now? But uh, again, definitely a grail for me there. Really happy to get that. And like I said, I, I'll put that in. I mean, if someone wants to comment down below, that's fine. But I'll probably throw that as a thread question sometime in the near future. Another good dollar bin find, well kinda. The album itself is great, Curtis Mayfield, Sweet Exorcist. I had never heard of this album actually. And so when I found it, I was like, oh okay, another Curtis Mayfield. And then I looked on the back and saw that picture and I was like, wait a second, this looks like old school Mayfield. Then I looked at the year and it was like 1974 and I'm like, okay, gotta check it out. And sure enough, I mean, it's, it's great stuff. Nice little gatefold here. Only problem is, it's a little bit warped, which sucks. So, uh, this is one I'm going to definitely try to get a better copy of. So, if someone in the VC has one, you know, trade, sale, whatever, let me know. Uh, but I think I am going to give, um, who was that that did the straightening the vinyl record with the little porcelain tiles? Oh, gosh, I can't remember who did that. I have it saved in my favorite, so I'm going to go back and check that video out. And I think I'm going to actually try that on this album, see if, see how much I can actually flatten this out. You know, again, I got it for a dollar, so if it completely screws up, I need a better copy anyway, so no big deal. And actually, I think that's about it. Yeah, actually, these I showed last time. I'm not sure why I pulled those out, the Prodigy and all of that. So, so anyway... There you go, VC. Those are some recent finds from like the last couple of days. Um, I do have some more good stuff coming in the mail, which hopefully will be here some point in time. And I'm also going to do another video in the next couple of days, just kind of doing a, um, you know, 
sum up 2012 type thing. Uh, and not so much about like the best albums of 2012, but just kind of more so my music experience for 2012. You know, kind of, you know, not only great albums I've really gotten into and listened to a lot this year, but uh, I kind of thought I'll talk a little bit about how I feel towards my collection right now, um, how I felt, how I approached my collection this year, and just kind of give a little more insight, you know, for those who even care. Um, on kind of just where I was musically, not only with what I listened to, but with just where I was in being encompassed in all of this music. So, uh, anyway, as always, great chatting, great sharing with the VC here. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of days to do that video I just mentioned. Alright, take care, VC. Oh, yeah. Go Cougars.